Okay, let me make sure that my brain is processing this correctly. Costa Rica has 6% of the world's biodiversity, at least a million species. Yes. And 60% of that million is insects. Yes, Costa Rica is a real insect country. Oh my, oh gosh. my gosh! Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> Holy oh my cow, gosh. that is an enormous beetle! Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. That is a highly advanced entomology light trap. This is my good friend and world-renowned entomologist, Jim. Say hi, Jim. Hello, guys. Tonight, we are using their powers combined to draw in some of the most fascinating insects of Costa Rica with the goal of catching and then showcasing a handful of them tomorrow under the light of day. But before we get to that, Jim, tell us why is this technology so advanced? Yeah, totally. We have a really incredible light trap that we use three different types of light bulbs to interfere the navigation of the insects. So we have the UV, the white light, and the mercury vapor to attract thousands of insects that we have in this rainforest. Now, why is that light combination so important? What does it replicate? Yes, so insects use the start in the moon to navigate inside of the rainforest. So now that we have really dark conditions, it's like the perfect time to really attract thousands of insects in this light trap. So we are intercepting their path, and with any luck, we're going to see some really cool insects. This is gonna take a lot of time though, arguably all night. So we're gonna sit back and enjoy the show to see what sort of creatures show up. With over 14 years of experience, Jim's field entomology research is unprecedented, as he humbly boasts the discovery of more than 30 new insect species. A true fanatic of creepy crawly things, he has dedicated his life to rainforest conservation. And as we are about to learn, it all begins with the bugs. All right, Jim, we are about two hours in since the lights turned on. There are easily over a thousand insects on the screen at this point. But when it comes to biodiversity in Costa Rica, do we know how many insect species there are in this country? Yeah, absolutely. So let me explain a little bit exactly the biodiversity that we have in this really small country in Central America. Costa Rica has almost 6% of the world's biodiversity, which is insane for a country of this size. Uh -huh. And we estimate that it's around a million species of everything, you know, plants, insects, mammals, birds, reptiles, and many things more. Really, a million species within Costa Rica? Yes, exactly. Okay. And 60% of that, over 60% of that, actually are insects. So we don't know an exact number, and that's probably because you guys are constantly discovering undescribed species. Totally. You know, what we know is at least 20% of what we have inside of, the, of Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. We really unknown, you know, the biodiversity of our country. So the insects that we're going to see tonight, 80% of them are still undescribed and are named for science. Really? So you're saying 80% of the bugs we might see tonight could be undescribed. So we could be totally. seeing new species that you've never totally. seen before. Totally. So here's an idea. You're an entomologist. You know your species, some you may not know, so it may be suitable to put you up to the challenge to see how many of these you can actually identify. What I'd love to do is get you up next to the screen and say, all right, I'm gonna point at one and you tell me if you can identify it. Okay. And let's see how many you get right and how many you just don't know. Absolutely, I take the challenge. You're up for the challenge? Okay, let's see if, you, right. can, let's see if you can name some bugs. <laughs> Real quick, I want to say a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this adventure. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. That means that no matter where you are in the world, you can talk to your own licensed professional, like in the comfort of your own home, or out in the rainforest searching for creepy crawlies. While it's true that I'm always seemingly upbeat, in reality, my life can get really stressful. Traveling the world, keeping up with a wild schedule, and running a business takes its toll in many ways. Counseling helps to ensure that my mental health stays in top shape, and it can do the same for you. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. 
And what's really cool is that you can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, offering more scheduling flexibility and a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bravewilderness, and I've also linked them in the video description below. We're gonna go big. What's that? This is one of the fruit feeding moths that we have inside of the rainforest. Ooh, how about <laughs> this one? That is Silophanes, a sphinx moth, really important pollinator. Ooh, what's that? This is basically a moth that is mimicking a really toxic group of beetles. So that is a moth? It's a moth that pretends to be a beetle. Jim, what's that? So basically, this belongs to a family that we call Cosidae or leopard moths. Another moth. Great. Another moth. All right, I'm gonna guess that that is not a moth. Jim, what's this? Yeah, people think this is a type of dragonfly, but actually it is not. It's one of the ant lions, and this is a predator of insects. Okay, I would've guessed wrong. I thought that was a dragonfly. Ah, uh, okay, let me look. Moth, moth, oh, here we go. What are those? Well, they are basically a really important group of pollinator beetles. Uh, ooh, what about this thing down here? Look at what I've got. Oh my gosh. Ah! It's a, give me a new species, hold on a second. All right, all right, I know what this is. Cicada. Totally. Uh, okay, this one is bizarre looking. What in the world is that? <laughs> I love this group of insects. We call it fulgurid, and they are really colorful. Let me show you. Oh, I need to be like really fast you because didn't they jump. It, did you? No, 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 they're oh, fine okay. actually. But let me show you how. Cool. It's like a Dalmatian under there. Yes, absolutely. All fulgurids are amazing here. Is that a moth? They are related with the cicadas, actually. Oh. I mean, related, closely related with the cicadas. Not a moth, imagine that. <laughs> okay, look at this. Is that a new species? It's so cool, right? And actually, we have two, two species of the same, the same genus. Oh my gosh, you're right. Can this you is see? like, yes. Yeah. They are so similar, but they are like, you know, different. The wind patterns are totally, totally different. And am I right? Is that a moth? It's a moth. It's a moth. It's a moth. <laughs> I got one. Okay. And what kind of moth? It belongs to the Erevide family too. Mm -hmm. So not a new species. It's not a new species. Looks like it could have been, but... Okay, so let's look at these right here. What are those? Well, you know, coyotes, sometimes we don't know what we have and it takes time to realize what it is. I don't know what it is, uh, are you talking about this one or are you talking about that one? I think it both. <laughs> both of them? Yes, I do know what they This looks like some sort of bat creature. I know, right? I'm assuming it's some sort of a moth, right? It is a moth. Both are moths. Both but, are moths. But that looks like a piece of a stick. Yeah, totally. Like a piece of wood, right? It's perfect camouflage. So you're saying you don't know what these two are. These could be nope. undescribed species. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, we need to collect those specimens and then to do the a dissection, to check the genitalia, to compare it with the closer species, to figure out which kind of family it is, and then if it's unknown, we can describe the species. Maybe this could be we'll the coyote. Just leave that for now. We'll just say these are pretty cool. <laughs> We're not gonna invade their privacy like that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what's that one? Okay, this is a group that we call Arctide. So uh, I love this group of moths. They're trying to resemble, you know, really like dangerous species of wasp. And that is why, you know, this species looks like this. Sure, I understand. So, aposematic coloration, mimicking a wasp. Correct. I was really thinking I was pointing at a wasp. Yet again, it's a moth. <laughs> All right, well, I would say without question, Jim knows his bugs. And what I've learned is that if it's not a moth, it's probably a beetle. Now, Jim, for an amateur entomology fanatic like myself, if I want to identify insects out in Costa Rica, is there a good field guide that you would recommend to everybody out there watching? Well, we have almost 11 years developing one app. So, you have an app for this? Yes, exactly. So we are one of the authors, and Biosur has been putting so much effort to put all this information in the pockets of the people. We have Animals of Costa Rica app, so we have mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, insects, and many things more you know, in this app. How many species have you guys cataloged so far? 7,000. So oh, oh my gosh! What? Let me see. What? This is insane, coyote! Oh my oh gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> Dude! 
Oh my gosh, this is insane. He's one of the largest that's beetles of beetle. our planet. Holy <laughs> cow, that is an enormous beetle. Okay, that's the biggest thing we've seen the entire night. No, don't even show the audience yet what that is. Holy cow, yes, dude. All right, yes. that is going to be the yes. ultimate bug of the yes. night. This you're gonna absolutely have to see. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe the size of that thing. It's insane. Holy cow, what kind of beetle is that? This is basically Megasoma lepus. Oh, the Megasoma lepus! Beetle, the largest <laughs> beetle of our planet. I don't know what that means, but it's <laughs> awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet the elephant beetle. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Jim, I'm gonna let you do the honors. Let's bring the beetle out of the container. I'm gonna place my arm out in front of the lens. Man, my hand's even shaking a little bit. Here we go. Coyote Peterson is about to handle the elephant beetle. Are you ready? I am ready, go ahead. One of the most strong beetles of the planet in your hand? I am ready. All right. Ah. All right. Oh, <laughs> those really claws are now. sharp. <laughs> wow. That thing, it has serious weight to it. I have never held a beetle that heavy or that strong. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if I can just get it to calm down in one spot there. And it's so spiky, the legs as well. Very spiky. Now, I know the first thing that anybody's going to notice out there watching is that dominant horn. Jim, what is the point of the horn on this animal? Yeah, totally. So this is a male, so basically just the males, they have that beautiful horn and they use that for combat between males in the forest canopy. So when they see another male around, and especially if there is a lady around, you know, they're going to start like fighting and creating a huge combat between each other until one of them drops down on the ground. Now, when it comes to something of this size, believe it or not, they're capable of flying, are they not? Yes, exactly. So these guys are not able to really take off and fly away just from the ground. So they need to climb up trees uh, to get in the forest canopy and from there they can jump and take off. So, because they are super heavy, this is the second heaviest insect in the planet. Look, What's bigger than this? The Hercules beetle. Wow. Maybe it's possible that the big tree behind our setup is what this would have dropped down from. Yeah, absolutely. So the light for sure attracted uh, this guy. But yeah, you can realize that it's uh, one of the most heavy insects in the planet. Okay, so I'm obviously taking the impact of these grappling hook-like claws and all the spines on the legs, but I know one question that the audience definitely wants answered. Is this creature capable of biting? Does it sting? And is it venomous or poisonous? No, at all. It's a harmless animal. Okay. Really, really friendly animal. Um, you know, so people normally, like, they feel afraid when they see these enormous creatures, you know, is inside of the rainforest or around the houses in rural areas in Costa Rica. But yeah, I mean, it's a really friendly creature, actually. Yeah, you know, it's very intimidating looking. I mean, they say don't judge a book by its cover. You can't judge an insect on its alien nature. This looks like something that would, you know, grapple onto you and just inflict a painful bite or a venomous sting. But like you said, completely harmless. So what threats does an animal like this and all insects for that matter face within the Costa Rican rainforest? Yeah, well, Coyote, I feel really worried about the conservation of this group of animals because they are crucial for the functioning of our ecosystems. 40% of the biomass of insects are gone in less than 10 years in Costa Rica. And there are three really important problems that still we need to work to fix this. So we are facing, you know, the loosening of habitats that is around 60% of the threats of insects and also you know the using of pesticides in our crops which is creating a huge problem with this the biomass of insects and of course climate change okay so it breaks down into three categories essentially mechanical right. the destruction of environment chemical which is pesticides and pollution and then all inclusive with climate change itself Daughter. and what happens if let's say all the insects on our planet were to disappear, what then happens to humankind? Yeah, we disappear with them. So people do not realize that we depend on insects. So all the insects are the most important creatures. We cannot imagine birds without insects. We can imagine that we're going to get food in our table without insects neither. People are oftentimes afraid of insects because they're misunderstood. And what we're realizing in talking with you, Jim, and working with your team and filming this episode is the insects 
need conservation. We're worried about things like polar bears and rhinos and all of these megafauna species. While that conservation is certainly important, these creatures need our support as well. And you're doing something very interesting in the Osa Peninsula with your organization, Biosur. Tell us a little bit about the focus and the goal for what you have going there. Yes, so one of the major goals that we have right now is to keep protecting you know, the tropical rainforest. Still, there are many areas that are for sale that are you know, um, you know, unprotected. And that is what we're trying to do, to protect the habitats of really endangered species that keeps disappearing in our planet. You know, it's crucial. And I think it's, you know, to save the rainforest would be one of the best solutions against climate change. Jim, thank you so much thank for you, having Gignote. us as a part of your research on this trip. You're amazing. Uh, we're gonna release this beetle back out into the wild tonight, so we'll show you guys some of those shots. But Jim, this has been fantastic. All right, can I challenge you something? You challenge me, I challenge you. Oh, you're gonna give me a challenge? Of course. What's the challenge? To put that animal in your face. <laughs> <laughs> on my face, wow, okay, well. Yeah, it's. I'm not one to turn down like a challenge. You like painful so you should try that. Okay, I have a feeling that everybody okay. out there watches is like, yeah, Coyote, let's see what happens when you place that on your face. Man, I'm kind of okay. actually worried a little bit about my eyeballs, but okay, right. here we go. All right. I'll put it on, the, try on that. the side of my head. Okay. I'm closing my eye, though, for this one. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. Okay, one, one two, two, three. three. Uh, oh, no, ah! the nails. Ah! <laughs> you can see how much ah! strong it is. Oh, it's in my ear. Oh, no. <laughs> ah! Oh, wow, that's really, really sharp. <laughs> okay, I think we can get the beetle off now. Okay, okay, okay. Protect right. my eyes! Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> well, there you have it, guys. The Ouch. ultimate Ouch. bug amphitheater. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs> oh, Jim, Thank that you. was awesome. <laughs> During my time spent working alongside Jim, I garnered a new understanding for the importance of insects. To put it simply, without these alien looking creatures, many of us consider creepy, there would be no us. Insects are pollinators, and without them, the plants from which we rely so heavily as a food source for survival would disappear. And if the plants vanish, it's just a few measly years before the human species as we know it ceases to exist. It's a harrowing reality whether you want to believe it or not. And the only way to slow, or maybe even stop it, begins with preserving the rainforest. The Biosur Foundation aims to do just that, but they need your help. As a nonprofit, they promote rainforest conservation, scientific research, and environmental education. The future of our rainforests relies upon the unity of our efforts. And if you would like to get involved, learn more, or even make a donation, Please make sure to check out their site and follow them on social media for weekly updates.